How's it going, everybody? Luke, you're back once again, and today I'm going to be bringing you the top five decks for Ladder in February. I realize we're a couple days into February, but the meta wasn't too different from my from my last one. Until recently, it shifted quite a bit, so I wanted to give it some time so that things could settle in and you wouldn't just have like the same deck as my last video. We're going to be taking a look at five decks, and I have one honorable mention, because I don't think that deck is as good as some people think, but it does have a really high win rate at high, or lower ranks. So there's going to be technically six decks, but one of them I'll talk about very briefly. But yeah, if you guys enjoy it and you know what to do, you can like my video, it would help me out a ton. And if you can comment something, just you know, tell me about your day, tell me about your favorite Hearthstone deck, I don't know, just comment. It helps me out a lot in both terms of the, the algorithm and also just, you know, it helps me out, it makes me happy. I appreciate the support. So without further ado, guys, we're gonna jump into the top five decks. If you can show me some support, I would love that. And I'll give you guys a little on the forehead. But yeah, let's jump right into the first deck, the honorable mention on our list. The last deck on our list is probably what you expect. I praise this deck very highly. I always say how insane I think this deck is. Almost as insane as someone who just broke out of an asylum. This deck is nuts. It's it's the nuts. It's quite literally the gonads. Enrage Warrior. I know what you're thinking. Luke, you always talk about Enrage Warrior. Every time you make a video, you talk about Enrage Warrior. Yeah, well, because the deck's insane. The deck is good, okay? I don't know what you want me to say. The deck is just good. Enrage Warrior has been around for a while. It's been one of the best decks since its inception. And... Look, I don't have to tell you guys, Risky Skipper is a good card, okay? It rotates soon, but until it rotates, Risky Skipper will probably dominate the meta. You can do so much with Risky Skipper. Battle Rage, you can gain armor with Armor Smith, you have Bear Off, you have um, the Brutes, this, the Five Eights. There's just so many different things that you can do, and Skipper enables all of this. Without Skipper, Warrior is probably just a shell of a class. It is empty. It is me. Damn. But yeah. Enrage Warrior is a good deck. It can be hard to pilot. That's kind of the theme of this top five. There's like three really hard to pilot decks. There's Rogue, which is like somewhat hard to pilot. And then there's uh, Token Druid, which is like kind of hard to pilot. And then you have Ramp Paladin, which is, if you think it's hard to pilot, then you probably have to go back to elementary school. Enrage Warrior is a hard deck to play. You have to make sure that every turn you're making the like largest tempo swing, but you're also holding removal, your spells for combo with his, with Corcoran. Sometimes you don't want to hold your spells and you have to use them to make a board. You have to know your matchups. It's actually a very complicated deck to play perfectly. There are a lot of good content creators such as Crane333 who are very tried and true with this deck. I recommend checking them out if you want to see like a good way to improve with this deck and how to play it optimally. But this deck will bring you results. If you play a thousand games with this deck, your win rate will probably be pretty high. If you're struggling, just make sure you think critically about what's wrong. But in general, I think this deck is just good. I think it's like all around. It's just like the best, most well-rounded deck. Every time I do open cups, I have it in my lineup. If I'm ever like stuck on what to play on ladder, I'm queuing this deck. And I think it's just, it's optimal. It's, it is what it is. It is the optimal deck for a gamer. If you are a gamer, you should be playing the optimal deck. So yeah, Enrage Warrior is pretty good, guys. I definitely recommend checking it out. Now, number two on this list is a little bit different. It's an archetype that you've probably seen more on Twitch than you have on Ladder. People have experimented with it, people have played different things. But if you're not playing at the highest level of Legend, you've probably not seen it too much. Number two is, I guess, Alusha Priest is the best name to call it. I've been calling it Monsanto Priest because he made it and he's my good friend. But realistically, I guess Alusha Priest is the best name for it. Now, for those of you who haven't seen this deck, it is quite literally a deck with one minion in it, and it's Alusha. All of the rest of the cards are removal spells, cycle, survival tools, or the I guess you have Cthulhu, so it's technically a second minion, but it breaks into part, to parts. But essentially this deck, the whole point is that you survive all the aggro decks by just clearing the board and healing, and then against combo decks, you are guaranteed to draw Lucia with Insight, which is a two mana, draw a minion, and if it's corrupted, Insight's corrupted rather, it'll make the minion cost two less. The whole point is that OTK decks can't beat you because you can always have a Lucia, or relatively guaranteed to have a Lucia. This deck is, it's annoying to play against. It's like, it takes all the bad things about Priest, which is the removal and the random generation, and then it adds a Lucia to it, and I don't like it. They also have Galakron, so you can't like run them out of resources ever, and they have Cthune, so you can't run them out of value, you can't fatigue them, you just die. It's annoying. Everyone I know who's played against this deck is not having a good time. On the last day of ladder, when people were going for ladder finishes, they were like, randomly, like 20 people were playing Bomb Warrior specifically to beat this deck because of how annoying it was to play against. This deck is very hard to play, Monsanto was watching me play it and he told me I sucked. My nose is so itchy, you probably think I'm on like coming off of an addiction or something. <laughs> Drugs aside, the only drug I like is Hearthstone. But he said I was playing this deck horribly. So this deck is pretty hard to pilot. If you do it well, you'll see results. I think even if it's a hard deck to play, it is undisputedly one of the best decks in the game right now. I definitely recommend giving it a try if you hate yourself. If I queue into you and you're playing Priest, you're going on Santa's naughty list though. It's, it is what it is. You are definitely going to get cold for Christmas. Number three might be something that you guys aren't expecting as much. A lot of you might be expecting Aggro Rogue, or um, if you use HS3 play, you probably think fucking Highlander Hunter is on here, but no. 
Number three is World Kick Rogue. This is a deck that you've probably seen in prior metas a lot. In fact, it was the only deck after Evolve Shamanist nerf that you would see on ladder. I had like a 45, 50% meta share. And in all honesty, it's still a pretty good deck. Just because people aren't playing it doesn't mean it's not great. I think a lot of people haven't been playing it for a couple of reasons. One, it doesn't feel as rewarding to play as other decks right now, because you know, it's old, it's been around forever. And two, it's just kind of boring sometimes. World Kick can do some crazy things, but We've been playing this deck for so long, it's kind of boring. But I was talking to my good friend Monsanto, you can find him on Twitter at MonsantoHS, not the GMO company. And he really thinks this deck is good. He thinks it's in the top three and I believe him, and I've played against it and I've lost almost every game against it. Jandis, Edwin, Questing, they all go bare. They, they do some crazy stuff. I've been playing a lot of Open Cups recently, you can catch them on my stream over at twitch.television forward slash lucre underscore HS. Doing a lot of open cups there every weekend, and this deck is in a lot of people's lineups, and it usually does pretty well. People are usually expecting aggro rogue, so they target it or ban it, and when you throw a world kick in the mix, it gets kind of confusing. I think this deck is very good, and I definitely recommend giving it a try. If you find it boring, well, maybe put on some Netflix and just play it at the same time. Just jam, just have some fun. It's uh, definitely a deck that I play while we're doing our movie nights and discords. Sometimes we'll be watching anime nights, and I think Rogue is definitely a good deck to play. I wouldn't be playing OTK Demon Hunter while watching anime or anything, because there's no way I could focus. But World Kick Rogue, for the most part, you can figure out what you're doing. And it's not the easiest deck to play, but it's a good deck to play while doing something else, I would say. I definitely recommend giving it a try, as it is probably within the top three decks for ladder right now. Before we talk about number four on this list, I want to say that I kind of forgot to mention that all the deck lists are in the description below, so you can scroll down and get them all. They're all linked to the Tempest Storm website, so if you want to go there and take the codes, it would help me out a lot. I know a lot of people just skip through the video and try to find the decks that they're looking for, and that's cool, but if you could do that, you know, if you're going to just come for deck lists, if you could leave a like and a comment, that would help me out a ton. But number four on this list is Token Druid. More specifically, the Gibberling Token stuff. It curves out to five mana. This rare type wasn't really a thing before the new miniset Dark and Races came out, but Arbor Up is a broken card. When you combine Arbor Up with Solar Eclipse, even Solar Eclipse with Savage Roar is really good, but Arbor Up with Solar Eclipse is insane. You can just, literally from nowhere, you can make a board. Or if you have a small board, it's a super threatening board by the end of the turn. If you ever have attack priority on minions, your opponent's taking like 8 damage minimum, it's it's a lot. It's This deck is really good. And I don't know, it's it's fun. It's, it's a little annoying because it feels like my opponents always draw Gibberling on turn 1, but playing it actually feels rewarding. It feels like there's a lot of decisions to make. You have to decide how many spells to play with Gibberling, you have to decide what to hold, what to play. Uh, some games you just draw the nuts and your opponent dies on turn three. Those ones are really hard. But uh, in all honesty, I like this deck a lot and I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's one of the better decks in the meta. There's a whole conception that aggro decks don't really take skill, but I think this... While there are some hands that might not be, you know, too hard to pilot, I think there are a lot where you're going to be spending turns thinking pretty heavily about what you want to do and how to get to the win cons. There are games where your opponents will clear three boards and they're still super winnable, but you have to play these games super awkwardly. You have to know what what boards to make, when to hold things back, when to go all in, when to just say your opponent doesn't have the removal, and that can be really skill intensive. I think Token Druid or Arbor Up Druid, whatever you want to call it, is a very good deck and I think it finds itself probably in the top four decks currently. Number five on our list is also something that might be uh, contested a little bit, I guess I should say. For some players, they might say this is the best deck in the game. For other players, they might think it's horrible. But OTK Demon Hunter is what I would put at number five. This deck takes a lot of skill to pilot. You have to know what you're doing. You have to be, you know, just ready to learn, ready to improve every game. Every game is different, except for the ones where you kill your opponent on turn seven. But in general, every game is relatively different, and it can take a lot of skill and knowledge of matchups to play this deck optimally. But if you are, I have the hiccups here. If you are good with it, then the deck will probably perform pretty well. Uh, there's not much to say about it, guys. You want to spend your turns not dying, you want to play Skull, you want to cycle, and then you want to kill your opponent with Ilganoth, more uh, spell power minions, and the Lifesteal cards, such as Falscreen, Blaster, Ivy. It's a lot of fun to pilot. You can do some crazy things. I've had my viewers tag me in tweets where they're doing like 100 and something damage, or 90 damage, or 300 damage, and it's like, it's insane. The deck is insane. But there are games where you're going to play where you just kind of sit there with a the full hand and overdraw every turn. If you can learn to pilot this deck optimally, you'll see players like Jay hitting rank 1 Legend, and if you're not good at the deck, you might be 10k Legend or Bronze 5 for the rest of your life. But if you can spend the time to learn, I think this deck is pretty good. And for that reason, it's coming in at number 5 on this list. Alright, so first we'll take a look at the Honorable Mention. Uh, people probably expect this deck to be higher up on the list, but personally, uh, from playing in higher Legend, I actually don't think it's as good as people think. It's very high rolly, and I mean, just from saying, the things that I've said, you can probably figure it out. It's Ramp Paladin, Cheese Paladin the spicy paladin, whatever you want to call it. Essentially, this deck tries to play Murlocs in the first few turns of the game to stall a game out. Then on turn four, they either play No Storm Rue or they coin Allura, or Allura coin to play Tip the Scales. Uh, when the deck hits the swing turns, it's insanely powerful, 
but it doesn't really hit the swing turns all that often, and there are a lot of decks, mainly aggro decks that can just go under it. If you play Allura, or Nazdormu, sorry, and ramp your opponent who's a OTK Demon Hunter, you're probably dead. If you ramp your opponent who's a Token Druid, you're probably dead. If you ramp your opponent who's an aggro, you're probably dead. So while this deck can do a lot of crazy things, if you don't win the next turn or the turn after, it's very hard to stabilize against a lot of the top decks in the meta. I do think it's like it's kind of different, it's kind of fun. I can honestly imagine they'll probably nerf Allura pretty soon, because it's, you know, some people, you know, it's not really fun to play against. But regardless, I think Ramp Paladin is definitely not a bad choice for ladder, and if you like this kind of deck, I'd recommend trying it out. Thank you guys for watching, I'll put my YouTuber voice back on. Thank you guys for watching this video, I hope you guys enjoyed my top 5. If you did, you know what to do. You can find all the deck lists in the description, I really do hope you guys enjoyed. I like making these videos, they always do well, you guys seem to like them. I need to find content to like supplement in the middle, but it's hard man, I don't know what people like with Hearthstone. They like watching funny moment videos, but then... It's hard to do that as a newer creator, and I'm not funny. I'm just sad. Damn. If you guys enjoyed, you know what to do. You can thumbs up the video and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. We're almost at 500, which is like a milestone I didn't think I would make that quickly. I upload very infrequently, like once a week. So if we, you know, if we can get to 500, I'll cry tears of joy for the first time in my life. It won't be tears of sadness. Thank you guys for watching. I made a lot of self-deprecation jokes today, but I hope you guys enjoy that too. I hope to see you guys next time. You know what to do. Take it easy, guys. And... I love each and every one of you. Peace out, Cubs and Scouts. Have a wonderful night. See you guys next time.